Hello YouTube, we are going to be looking today at adding integers and we will not be focusing on the numbers, we will be focusing on the signs, positive or negative. This is great practice for us to basically get those rules solidified in our minds. If you want to practice with the actual numbers, you can check out the video, the previous video in this playlist which focuses on the rules for adding integers. Today we are just going to be talking about the sign. Let's get started. So what you can expect today is that we will have a short mini lesson, a little bit of review, and then we'll have a lot of practice. And at the very end, I'm going to throw two word problems at you. Again, following this focus on the sign, not on the numbers. Let's start with our review and our, um, our lesson. I want to show you a couple examples of integers. If you've been watching any of the videos about integers, you've seen not these same numbers, but the basic list here. Integers are positive and negative numbers. That's what we are going to be working with today. When you're looking at a number line, and that's what we're going to focus on for the visual end of this lesson, this is a number line here. And all of our integers that we're going to be talking about basically start from this point. Um, this is where we will decide if a number is positive or negative. This is the point zero on the line. And the numbers over here, like three and seven and 10, those numbers that are on the right of that line or the right of zero are positive numbers. We could also represent that with a green arrow saying everything on the right of zero is going to be a positive number. That's what positive numbers look like on a number line. On the other side of things, negative numbers on a number line look like this. They could be negative one, negative six, negative nine. Or we could represent that with an arrow. I just made it the color red, just red and green, positive, negative, I don't know. But it's everything left of that point. Everything left of the zero on a number line is going to be a negative number. Positive numbers are on the right, negative numbers are on the left. That's just an important piece of background information we all need to have before we move forward. So let's move forward. When we add on a number line, it looks like this. Here's our, our addition question. This is a tough one. Uh, I know some people might struggle with one plus two, but on the number line, it's going to look like this. One plus two is equal to three. There we go. That's what adding on a number line looks like. Here's another example. Negative one plus negative two. We would start with negative one, add on another negative two, and that would bring us to negative three. So you'll notice in these two examples where I had a positive plus a positive gave us a bigger positive, a negative plus a negative gives us a bigger negative. And that is really important when we're talking about the rules for adding integers. Now it's time for us to practice. And for practice, we're going to do fast facts. I just want you to tell me if it's going to be a positive or a negative answer. That's it. I don't want you actually doing the math and adding these numbers together. Just look at them and you should be able to immediately say, what is the sign going to be, positive or negative? Let's do it. Negative four plus negative six, negative, right? A negative plus a negative gives you a negative. Let's try another one. Negative one plus negative one gives us a negative, right? A negative plus a negative gives us a negative. Perfect. How about five plus eight? That's going to give us a positive because it's a positive five plus a positive eight gives us a positive. Seven plus nine. Positive plus positive gives us a positive. So you can see in that quick review that you if the signs are the same, you've got a negative plus a negative, you're gonna get a negative result. If the signs are the same, positive plus a positive gives you a positive result. This is the quick and easy one. We're going to now move into a little bit more complicated with adding on a number line. And to show you that, I'm gonna bring back the number line with our integers. If we have negative three plus nine, it would look like this. You start out by going negative three 
and then you add 9, which brings you all the way up here to positive 6. Look at that for a second. What you're looking at is, are there more positives or negatives? Which is greater, positive 9 or negative 3? Right? Which is there more of? Are there more negatives or more positives? That's the way I like to think about this. You can also think about it as in terms of absolute value. Absolute value basically makes you forget about the negative sign and just look at the two numbers and say which is bigger, which is basically what we're doing, right? So in this case, there's way more positives than negatives. There's nine positives and only three negatives. So our final answer is going to be positive. Let's look at another example. 3 plus negative 9. When we start with a positive 3 and we add on to that negative 9, we are going to end up way over here at negative 6. Our final answer is going to be negative. If you look at that, it makes sense. Look how many more negatives there are. Look how much longer that red arrow is. There's only three positives and yet there's nine negatives. So when we're looking at addition of integers, you look at the two numbers, forget about the sign, forget about that negative nine or the negative in front of the nine for now. And we look at the absolute value of that number. In other words, which of those two digits, three or nine, which of them is bigger? Then we say, okay, now let's look at this sign. In this case, it's negative. Therefore, our final answer is going to be negative. In all the questions that we do from now on, we're not actually going to get to the number. We're just going to look at the sign. Will the sign be positive or negative? Let's do some fast facts. Just look at the expression and tell me, will it be positive or negative? Positive 4 plus negative 6. That's going to be negative because 6 is larger than 4. So we have more negatives than positives. How about this one? Negative 3 plus 10. That's going to be positive. We have 10 positives, only 3 negatives, so our final answer will be positive. Let's try this one. Negative 9 plus 8. Look at the numbers. We have 9 negatives. We have 8 positives. We are going to have a negative final answer. And the last one, negative 7 plus 7. And that's a trick question thrown in there because I'm a mean teacher. And that's what we do. But the answer for that one's 0. Remember back at the very beginning of this unit, we talked about adding opposites gives you 0. So just a quick review of that lesson. Now we go on to a real life practice problem. On a moderate Canadian morning, it was negative 30 degrees Celsius. If the temperature rises 20 degrees Celsius, is the new temperature below or above 0 degrees Celsius? This is a great question that actually shows, first off, that Mr. Buffington's completely silly, but also it shows that we can kind of apply this to real life. We don't necessarily need to know the exact temperature. We just want to know if it's above or below freezing. So we will set it up exactly the way we did in our speed practice, right? We'll set up negative 30 degrees Celsius. It rises 20 degrees, so that's plus 20. Will that give us a positive or negative? I don't care what the actual temperature is. I just want to know if it's positive or negative. In this case, it is negative because there's 30 negatives and only 20 positives, right? There's more negatives than positives. The absolute value of those two numbers, 30 is bigger than 20, so therefore we've got 30 negatives, which are greater than 20, which would be our positives. Let's move on to, um, let's just say, an American example of that, which doesn't make nearly as much sense in Fahrenheit, but that's all right. On a cold day in California, it's 72 degrees Fahrenheit. In the evening, the temperature drops 35 degrees Fahrenheit. Is the new temperature above or below 0 degrees Fahrenheit? 
Again, measuring by zero degrees Fahrenheit is sort of silly, but, but you get the point. Let's set up our addition expression and then ask ourselves if our result will be positive or negative. Remember, above or below zero is exactly what the line is between positive and negative. Our addition expression is 72 plus negative 35. The reason it's negative 35 is because the temperature is dropping 35 degrees. So just look at those two numbers. We have 72 positives. We have 35 negatives. Will my final answer be positive or negative? Are there more positives or negatives? Well, there's more positives. There's 72 of those. So our temperature will be above zero degrees Fahrenheit. Couple of things to remember. We are just looking at signs today. So we want to, when we're adding integers, we ask ourselves which is greater or which has a greater absolute value. If it's more positives than negatives, your final answer is going to be positive. If it's more negatives than positive, your answer is going to be negative. And if you're adding two positives, you'll get a, an even bigger positive. And if you're adding two negatives, you're going to get a larger number that is negative. So a bigger negative? I don't know if that's the right way to say it. Anyway, I hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.